To listen to the full audio series, install the Pocket FM app now. Episode 121, The Masked Attacker. Ah, let me go. Seeing Henry's face looking down at her, Vivian was so scared that she closed her eyes and struggled crazily to free herself from his arms. And it wasn't only her. The four waitresses were also struggling fiercely to get away from Henry's friends. The scene was chaotic and everyone watching was horrified. Damn it, let go, shouted Vivian. The boyfriends of the four girls who had been serving drinks were also present. Naturally, they were enraged when they saw their girlfriends being manhandled. And the rest of the boys watching were all hot-blooded men in their 20s. Of course, they all felt indignant in being ordered around by these bullies. Without any warning, a few guys bellowed and rushed toward Henry and his friends. Henry and the others were shocked and immediately let go of the women that they were holding. As some young guys rushed toward Henry, his four friends stood in front of him, yelling at them and hoping to scare them off. Suddenly, bottles, chairs, and stools started raining down on them, and they were unable to fight back. Henry's friends screamed as they were getting pummeled by the flying furniture. They only managed to hit the young guys a couple of times. A few minutes later, Henry's friends conceded that they couldn't protect him. All they could do was squat on the ground with their arms over their heads to protect themselves. Beat up their leader, shouted one of the young guys. His friend agreed. We need to drag these four pieces of trash out of the way so we can get the one hiding at the back. The youngsters looked like they wanted to kill Henry. Henry was terrified as he sat hugging his head and shouting, Slayer, save me! The youngsters didn't care who this man was. They had no interest in understanding anything about him. They just knew they wanted to get their revenge. A fist had already landed on his head. Then two of the young guys suddenly let out cries of pain. The others turned around and saw that their friends were lying on the ground. Then others started falling. Before they could work out what was happening, half of them were lying out on the floor. It was the little man in the mask. This masked aggressor seemed to be some sort of martial arts expert who knew exactly what he was doing. Each time he attacked someone, he would either kick their knee out first, or he would attack so quickly that they weren't able to dodge him or fight back. He was like an unstoppable ninja. Less than two minutes later, not a single young man was still fighting. Some were still lying on the ground moaning. Others were not hurt, but they were too in awe of this man to keep fighting. They watched him meekly, some holding their injuries. No one dared to take another step forward. Slayer walked to Henry's side and said, Boss? Everyone was surprised to hear him address him in this way. Are you stupid? Your boss has been beaten up, yet you're just standing there watching the show? Damn you! Henry shouted at him and thumped his head as hard as he could. Slayer lowered his head. He was not tall to begin with, but now he looked even smaller. He had defeated more than ten people single-handedly. The onlookers were surprised to witness such a strong person behaving so subverbiantly in front of Henry. All this time, Alex had been observing Slayer from the back of the crowd. He saw that he was dressed in fashionable but worn clothes that had been given to him by Henry. His outfit consisted of a brown suit jacket, which looked to be a few years old, a pair of blue jeans and a pair of white sneakers. These three pieces of clothing didn't match at all, and the fact that Slayer was wearing a white mask only added to his odd appearance. Alex also noticed that his hands were yellow and his nails were long and dirty. He had a crew cut and two bald patches were visible on his head, giving the impression that he was sick. What kind of person is he? Alex wondered. Everyone there had the same question on their minds. Henry looked down at Slayer and ordered loudly, I'll let you off this time. You can be useful at crucial moments. Remember, if you ever see me in danger, you must immediately come out and protect me. Whoever hits me must be beaten to death. Do you understand? Understood, Slayer answered timidly. When the others heard his meek voice, it was hard for them to imagine that he was the same violent man that they had just witnessed. 
Henry looked at the young people eyeing him nervously and he shouted arrogantly, You bunch of losers! You want to take me on again? Just try it! Seeing that they were all scared of him, he walked over to them and slapped two of the young men twice on their faces. He bragged confidently, You're nothing but a bunch of cowards. If any of you dares to interfere with my business again, don't think I'll let you off so lightly. I might even beat you to death. Come out if you're not afraid of death. Come on then. The young men had heard many stories about people being killed in this type of situation, and they didn't doubt that this angry man meant what he said. He was an arrogant person from a powerful family. He also had the ruthless masked attacker under his command, who clearly would stop at nothing to please his employer. None of them dared to challenge him. Seeing that no one dared to cross him, Henry shifted his gaze to Vivian, who shuddered and took a step back. Henry walked toward her with a sinister smile. Everyone watching could guess his intentions, but no one dared to intervene. They were ashamed and lowered their heads, as if they would feel better if they couldn't see what was happening in front of them. Vivian leaned against a table. Her hand was resting on it as she looked at Henry in fear. Her mind was trying to think of a way to solve the problem. But as he walked up to her smiling wickedly, only panic remained in her mind. Watching the scene, Alex was also struggling to work out what he should do. If he tried to intervene now, he would be putting himself at risk. He had hurt Henry in the past and had hindered his relationship with Kelly. He knew that he couldn't battle both him and the guy in the mask. Henry walked over to Vivian. He grabbed her hands and, looking at her terrified face with a cruel smile, he said, This table may not be as soft as a bed, but the height is perfect. Do you want to get yourself up on it or shall I put you there? As he grabbed her around the waist and carried her to the table, Vivian screamed out in terror. Let me go, help, save me. Come on, baby, Henry said in mock adoration. He lifted Vivian onto the table and started to take off her clothes. Suddenly, a figure flew out from the crowd and pushing himself off the shoulders of the two people next to him, leapt high into the air. Looking like Bruce Lee, he kicked Henry on the back of the head. Henry screamed in pain and fell to the ground. Vivian also fell off the table on the floor. Vivian, are you okay? Her savior asked. It was Alex. When he had seen that she was going to be molested by Henry, he had rushed out of the crowd without stopping to worry about the consequences. After kicking Henry, he went straight over to help Vivian up and check if she was alright. I'm fine, Vivian replied. She only had a small injury to her arm. She and Alex both looked fearfully at Henry. He had fallen heavily onto the ground when Alex kicked him. He got up with a groan and a clear shoe print was evident on his face. He frowned from the pain and as he looked around him, he saw that it was Alex who had kicked him. His friends instantly recognized Alex and spoke to Henry excitedly. One said to him, Henry, that's the same guy from the other day. Yes, it's the same one, agreed another. You little shit, so it's you, Henry said angrily. He gave Alex a look of pure hatred. He, Henry, had never been assaulted twice by the same person like this. Slayer, he roared, still glaring at Alex. Yes, sir, Slayer replied as he quickly walked to Henry's side. Are you stupid? He cursed and hit Slayer's head hard, which made his arms start hurting. Ouch, the little man screamed. You're supposed to be protecting me. If you don't start doing your job, you better be scared for your own life. Do you understand? Understood, sir, Slayer answered meekly. Now beat him up. Don't be afraid. My family will get you out of any trouble. He took a dagger from one of his friends and handed it to Slayer. They all carried daggers, which they used to scare people with. Go. He pointed at Alex and pushed Slayer toward him. Slayer unsheathed the dagger. His eyes peeked out from his mask and stared at Alex as he slowly approached him. The others in the room were panicking. The girls were clenching their fists and the men were anxiously wondering what to do. 
They all wanted to help Alex, but the dagger in Slayer's hand stopped them from getting involved. Vivian was frightened. She held Alex's arm tightly and asked him helplessly, What should I do? Alex didn't say anything as he stared at Slayer who was walking over. He slowly moved Vivian behind him. What are you doing? Vivian asked him anxiously. Alex simply moved her out of the way. She wanted to go back to try and help him, but someone else stopped her. Alex looked at Slayer with respect for his skill, but also with pity. He pitied him because he couldn't understand why he would want to be a lackey for someone as evil as Henry. When Slayer was two yards away from him, Alex noticed his eyes freeze for a moment. Alex suddenly thrust his hand toward him from behind. In his hand, he also held a knife. Before rushing out in Vivian's defense, Alex had slipped behind the bar looking for a weapon with which to confront her assailants. He was aware of Slayer's martial arts skills and knew that when he attacked him, his opponent would not hold back at all. Slayer tried to dodge his attack, but Alex was too fast. He inflicted a deep wound to Slayer's shoulder, which started bleeding profusely. The dagger in his hand fell to the ground with a clanging sound. Episode 122, Meeting Monica. When they saw the vicious wound that Alex had inflicted on Slayer, everyone was shocked. When the girls saw the blood, they screamed and threw themselves into their boyfriend's arms. Henry and his friends were also stunned. They'd wanted to watch a good fight, but certainly hadn't predicted this result. Henry started to panic a little. What are you waiting for? Call the police! Alex growled at the bartender. Several of the surrounding boys responded by taking out their phones to dial 911. Seeing that the police had been called, Henry shouted to his friends, Hurry up, we need to go. He led them as quickly as he could out of the bar. None of them stopped to check on Slayer. Holding his injured shoulder, Slayer tried to leave, but he was blocked by the young men in the bar. Alex saw what was happening and said to the men, let him go. Anyone could tell that he was only doing what Henry ordered him to do, and Alex didn't hold him responsible at all. They all made way for Slayer, who slowly walked out of the bar clutching his injured shoulder. When Alex saw that Henry and his friends had finally left, he let out a long sigh of relief. The people at the bar tidied up a bit, bid their farewells to Vivian, and then left one by one. Vivian had been sitting beside Alex watching what was happening. She had expressed her gratitude to him for saving her and had personally applied ointment to his injuries. She accompanied him to the exit as he was about to leave. Take care, see you later, she said as she waved goodbye to him. The movement aggravated her elbow injury and she flinched with a sudden pain. Alex heard her gasp and asked, Are you okay? As he quickly walked back over to her, he looked at her elbow and saw that it was purple with bruises. He guessed that even a slight movement would cause her a lot of pain. Vivian smiled slightly and replied, It's fine. I'll go back and put some cream on it. She didn't want to hold him up. Alex looked at a red Porsche parked in front of the bar, frowned, and asked Vivian, How will you get home? She realized that she couldn't drive at all and replied, Ugh. I can't drive, but I can get a cab. Please don't worry about it. Give me the key, Alex requested. Why do you want the key? Vivian asked as she fumbled for her car keys. He took them from her and helped her walk over to the Porsche. Let's go, I'll take you home, he said. Following her directions, Alex drove them to Vivian's home and helped her into the living room. He asked her where he could find her medicine cabinet and brought some ointment to apply to her elbow. As she sat on the sofa in the living room, Alex held her arm and carefully applied the balm. Watching Alex's meticulous concentration and remembering how he had risked his life to save her in the bar, Vivian's feelings for him started to grow. She felt happy and a little giggly. While she was daydreaming about him, Alex was engrossed in his thoughts. 
he felt a sudden gust of air on his face. And as he looked up, he glimpsed a black shadow smashing down toward his head. He dropped Vivian's hand and dodged to the side. Monica, no! Vivian shouted loudly. Luckily, Alex was able to get out of the way in time, and the missile had missed him. When he stood up to see what had happened, he saw a 12 or 13 year old girl in pajamas holding a rolling pin. He realized that she had thrown the rolling pin at him and missed, then grabbed it from the floor and rushed toward him again, brandishing it in her hand. Monica, what are you doing? Vivian asked the girl as she grabbed her and held her still in her arms. He's a bad man. He bullied you. I'm going to kick him out, the girl replied, glaring at Alex. If it wasn't for Vivian hugging her, she would have still rushed over to hit him. Alex realized that she looked and sounded very childish and deduced that she must be younger than he first thought. Vivian hugged her and tried to calm her down, but she didn't want to listen. Finally, Vivian's patience ran out. She let go of the girl and pointed at Alex, saying, Go on then, go and hit him. Do what you want. She sat back down on the sofa, helplessly looking very sad and angry. Mom, I'm not hitting him anymore. Please don't get bad at me. Look, I'm not hitting him. She threw the rolling pin down and sat beside Vivian, cuddling up to her and looking at her pleadingly. Vivian asked her, Are you really not going to hit him anymore? She replied, I promise I won't, Mom. Please, don't be angry with me. She was still afraid that Vivian would punish her. All right, as you're being so obedient now, I won't be angry. Vivian said as she hugged her. Then she looked at Alex and said, Come over here. He walked over and sat in front of Vivian and Monica, noticing that although the girl was pretty, she looked nothing like her mother. He also thought that the girl looked a little dazed. Vivian addressed her daughter. Monica, I'll introduce you. This is Alex. He's a good friend of your mom's. When you see him in the future, you mustn't be as rude as you were today. Do you understand? Okay, she replied without much interest. Alex nodded to her in a friendly manner. However, it was clear that she was only pretending to agree. The look she gave Alex was filled with hostility. Vivian sighed helplessly. Did we wake you up? She asked the child. Come on, Mom will take you back to bed. Alex, wait here. She continued as she held Monica's hand and led her toward one of the bedrooms. Mom, tell me a bedtime story. Otherwise, I won't be able to sleep. Tell me the story of that astronaut who went up to heaven. Okay. The astronauts were floating in the space station. Outside the porthole was the vast space. Suddenly... The astronaut heard a da-da sound coming from outside the porthole. Oh no, ghosts, I'm scared. Is there a ghost outside the porthole? Alex could hear Vivian and Monica talking in the bedroom. Sitting on the sofa, he couldn't help but smile. After about ten minutes, Vivian gently closed the door and walked back into the living room. She went over to Alex and apologized for Monica's rudeness. I'm truly sorry for what happened, she said. It's all right, Vivian. Is Monica your daughter? Alex asked. He couldn't figure out who she was. Although she called Vivian mom, she didn't look anything like her. He was sure that the relationship wasn't that straightforward. Monica is a child I adopted. She has learning disabilities. Although she's 13 years old, she has an intellectual age of 3 or 4. As she spoke, she looked a little sad. I understand, replied Alex, feeling sorry for Monica. Did she hit me because I did something to upset her? He asked. This was the first time that Alex had met Monica. He was trying to work out why she seemed to hate him so much. Vivian smiled uneasily. It's nothing. She was probably scared because she woke up in the middle of the night and found a stranger in the house. Really? Alex sensed that Vivian was hiding something from him, but he didn't push her anymore. He stood up and said, I should leave. It's already so late. I think you should just stay here for the night. We have a guest room. It won't be a problem, Vivian replied, urging him to stay. 
It was almost three in the morning, so he agreed to stay the night. The next day, Alex woke up early. Vivian had already prepared breakfast for him and Monica. While they were sitting at the table eating, Alex noticed that Monica was still glaring at him. However, now that he understood her situation, he felt pity for the child. After breakfast, she begged Vivian, Mom, I want to go out and play. Not today, Monica, I haven't got time. You only have to wait for two more days, then I'll take you to the amusement park. Vivian replied as she pattered ahead to comfort her. The child appeared to be very disappointed. Alex couldn't bear to see her so upset, so he suggested, Vivian, I think there's an outdoor gym down the road. Why don't I take Monica there to play for a while? Vivian agreed. If he took Monica out for a while, she could get on with some work. Although Monica didn't like him very much, she wanted to go out, so she was happy to go to the gym with him. When they got there, she didn't seem to know how to use any of the equipment, so he showed her what to do. This made her start to like him a little. When she saw him do 30 repetitions on a piece of equipment with spinning wheels, her eyes lit up. She clapped her hands and jumped up in excitement. Without her realizing it, Monica's hostility toward Alex had gone and her heart was filled with affection for him. I want to ride a big horse, she told him excitedly. To ride a big horse? He asked in confusion. She walked up to him and told him to crouch down. Then without any hesitation, she climbed onto his back, happily patted his head and said, Go boy! Alex was speechless. This must be what she means by riding a big horse, he thought. Monica slapped her palm on his head and said, Yeah, go! And Alex, the dignified heir of one of the wealthiest and most powerful families in the world, was bullied into action by a 13-year-old girl. After he had walked for one or two hundred yards, Monica finally climbed off him and let him stand up straight. He felt gratified that the hostility in her eyes was gone. The morning's torture had been worth it. Episode 123, Where is My Daughter? When Vivian saw Alex and her daughter Monica returning, it was clear to her that they were now friends. She was surprised, and although she couldn't work out how it had happened, she felt very happy. Alex left Monica with Vivian and went away. The next three days passed by as usual. Ken Stokes still hadn't heard anything useful about Debbie. Alex went to Ramsey Lake every day and sat on the rock where he and Debbie had once eaten seafood risotto together. He looked at the lake in a daze. With Debbie still missing, her classmates at Preston University graduated without her. Alex watched them dragging their luggage behind them as they left the school for the first time. As they celebrated their successes and praised each other on their grades, Alex's pain deepened. One particular day, he was sitting on the rock staring blankly at the lake when Vivian called. She asked, Alex, are you busy right now? If you're not, can you do me a favor? I'm not busy, what is it? Alex answered. In the background, he could hear Monica crying. I wondered if you could help me by taking Monica out to play today. I was hoping to take her myself, but the man who was taking over the bar called me unexpectedly saying he needs to discuss the details with me this morning. I tried to explain it to Monica, but she refused to listen, Vivian said worriedly. No problem. I'll come to your place now. Then you'll be free to do what you need to do, Alex said. He ended the call and stood up to leave. He felt a bit worried about Monica after hearing her anguished crying over the phone. As he left the university campus, he stood at the intersection to find a cab. He suddenly felt that something was wrong behind him, but when he turned around to take a look, he couldn't see anything unusual. He shook his head doubtfully as a cab pulled up next to him. He climbed in and headed to Vivian's home. When he arrived, Vivian thanked him profusely. She asked him to take Monica to the amusement park and then to the Sunrise Special Education School, where she could play with the other children. Why there? Alex asked. 
He was happy to take Monica to the amusement park, but he couldn't understand why she wanted him to take her to a special school. He assumed the other children there would also have learning disabilities. Vivian replied, Because there, Monica is equal to the others. No one will look at her with discrimination, pity, or mockery. She can feel normal there. She looked sad. In the past, she had taken Monica to many different places, but when people saw that Monica was lacking in intelligence, they always looked at her with pity. I understand, Alex thought. He always looked at Monica with pity, too. They spoke for a few minutes, then Alex and Monica left. They took a cab and went to the city's amusement park. The amusement park had all kinds of fun rides and other attractions. Together, they went on the pirate ships, tried the sledgehammers, and rode the carousels. They spent several happy hours at the park, and Monica spent the whole time laughing and cheering. Alex was filled with joy when he looked at her gleeful face. After eating lunch, then resting in the shade for an hour, they made their way to the Sunrise Special Education School. It was a private school and was worlds apart from the city primary school. It was not run for profit, but purely to help these children with learning disabilities. Alex took Monica to the school field. He watched the other children as they approached. Their ages ranged from about 6 to 13, but all were behaving as if they were much younger. As soon as Monica arrived at the sports field, she broke away from Alex and ran toward a group of children. It was obvious that she had been there many times before. She went over to a small group of kids, and they started chatting like old friends. They seemed like normal adolescents from a distance, but the contents of their conversation was more typical of much younger children. Monica was saying to her friends, My mom is always too busy to bring me here. She's busy doing thousand-dollar business deals. Otherwise, I would have flown over on a big plane to see you guys a long time ago. Big plane? What are you bragging about? That's nothing. I came here by steamer the last time. Your family is so much worse off than mine. At most, you can drive a Rolls Royce, bragged one of the boys. Another said, Monica, my family just moved to the Himalayas. When I have time, I'll invite you to my house to be a guest, and you can eat tiger meat. Monica seemed so natural and relaxed. Alex had never seen her looking so comfortable. He felt a tinge of sadness for her. Twenty minutes later, he heard a scream and a boy's voice shouting, Don't run, you stinky Monica! I'll beat you to death! When Alex looked around, he saw that Monica was running toward him as fast as she could. She hid behind him and gasped for breath as she looked at the boy who was chasing her. The boy saw that she was hiding behind Alex and stopped running. Alex was afraid that she had been hurt, so he quickly pulled her to him and checked her body nervously, asking, What did he do to you? Let me see, it's okay, he said softly as he gently hugged her. Monica left out a soft moan, which surprised him. He rolled up her sleeves and then looked at her waist. There was a purplish-red bruise on it. Alex got angry when he saw it. He was about to grab the boy who had been chasing her. Alex, where are you going? Monica asked as she rubbed the bruise. He was the one that beat you up, so I'm going to get him to apologize, he replied. Oh, Monica said. Then she paused for a moment before laughing out loud. But he wasn't the one who hit me. Alex stopped and walked back over to her. Who hit you then? Um... Monica suddenly felt at a loss. She lowered her head and a few seconds later, two tears rolled down her cheeks. Monica, don't cry, it's alright. Seeing her like this, his heart sank. He held her and tried to comfort her. Monica, tell me who hit you. I promise I can sort it out. Her eyes and nose were red and she looked pitiful. Looking into his eyes, she felt warm inside. I don't know who they are. These men sometimes come to our house at night. They hug mom for ages and it makes me really scared. So last time I hit the man, but he hit me back. 
and then he hit mom and dragged her into her bedroom and locked the door so I couldn't get in. I heard mom shouting inside and I was so scared. When Monica remembered what had happened, she was so frightened that more tears streamed down her cheeks and her chest heaved up and down. She pulled up her sleeves and the legs of her shorts and here and here, this is where they hit me. On Monica's snow white skin, Alex could see lots of scars and bruises. He was horrified. Does your mom have bruises too? He asked as he helped her to straighten her clothes. Yes, she's got more than me, and she cries every night. Do you remember what this man looked like? His heart was filled with anger. It's a different man every time. I can't remember them all. That's why I was so scared when you came to the house the first time. I thought you wanted to hit mom and drag her into the bedroom. That's why I hit you. It's all right, I understand. I'm not going to let anyone bully you anymore, he said, and he patted her head as he began to think about how he could protect this girl and her mother. Alex, let me go. I want to apologize to my friend. We were just playing a game. I shouldn't have pretended that I was so scared. Monica recovered her composure. She smiled at Alex and ran toward the little boy. Watching her holding the boy's hand and apologizing, Alex became lost in thought. Vivian seemed so bright and confident that he was shocked to find out about what she was going through. Then he heard a cheerful voice. He looked up and saw Vivian smiling at him. I'm done with my work, so I've come to meet you both. Thank you so much for today, she said. It was a pleasure, he replied. He looked at her with increased respect. Where's Monica? She asked as she looked around the field. Playing with the kids over there, he replied, pointing toward the location where he'd just seen Monica with her friend. His voice stopped abruptly as he saw that she had vanished. He looked around the field, but he couldn't see her anywhere. He quickly stood up and ran toward the little boy who she'd been playing with. He grabbed the boy's shoulder and asked him anxiously, Where's Monica? Her father just came and collected her, the little boy said with a relaxed smile. Alex looked anxiously at Vivian and saw that she was on the verge of tears. She was mumbling to herself, Who would pretend to be her father? When was this? He asked the little boy again, but the boy was struggling to explain himself properly. Don't be afraid. Come on, follow me, he said to Vivian, trying to console her. They went to the school CCTV control room and asked the security guard to play back the film of Monica being carried away. On the screen, they could see two middle-aged men waving to her from the school's side gate. One of them was waving a candy bar at Monica, and when she saw this, she happily ran over to them. When she reached the gate, the other man quickly grabbed her and covered her mouth. Then two men ran off with her in their arms. I'm so sorry. Alex said to Vivian. At that moment, he hated himself. Vivian couldn't hide her grief as she howled, Shut up! You being sorry isn't helping anything! I only want my daughter back! Tears were streaming from her eyes. You call the police right now. I'm going to find her and get her back, Alex said. His gaze sharpened as he ran outside. Vivian called the police and then ran out of the school behind Alex. Episode 124, Saved by the Masked Man After leaving the school, Alex ran in the direction in which he'd seen the two criminals escaping on the CCTV. Using his intuition to decide which way to go, he ran for more than a kilometer. At a narrow intersection, he paused as he suddenly heard faint curses and moans. His gaze focused as he ran toward the noises. He saw two men standing beside a van. It's them, Vivian whispered. She had followed Alex, and she recognized the two men from the CCTV film. They were the ones who had taken Monica. Both men had pained expressions on their faces. One was holding himself around the waist, and the other was rubbing his head. It looked as if they had both just been beaten up. Alex didn't hesitate as he rushed toward them. 
He screamed, You bastards, I'm going to kill you! When the men saw Alex charging toward them, clearly wanting to fight with them, their first instinct was to feel insulted but amused. He was clearly very young and no match for them. What's this? One of them asked his buddy. What the hell? said the other. Before they could get into position, Alex had hurtled up and kicked one of them. The man fell instantly to the ground. He also knocked the other man to the ground, then propped his knees against his neck and raised angrily. Where's the little girl? Vivian had already searched the van, but there was no sign of her. What are you talking about? We don't know anything about a little girl. The man didn't know that Alex had already seen the surveillance cameras. He thought he could bluff his way out of it. You bastard. Alex smashed his fist into the man's nose. The man felt a burst of pain as tears, snot, and blood all flowed down his face. Tell me right now, Alex demanded. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. The man was too scared to lie anymore. We were taking her to the car, but someone jumped out on us and knocked us down. By the time we could react, he and the girl were already gone. Vivian and Alex's heart sank when they heard that Monica had been snatched away by someone else. You must know who it was. Speak. Alex slapped the man. I beg you, please stop hitting me. We really don't know who he was. He was so fast. We, we didn't even see him clearly. The man said tearfully. Alex was furious, and he punched the two men hard in the guts. They held their stomachs, feeling as if their internal organs had been crushed. At that moment, two police cars arrived. Alex handed the two men over to the officers, who took them to the police station in one car, leaving the other car behind with two other officers. The remaining police officers contacted the traffic department, who told them that on the footage from surveillance cameras, they had been able to spot the suspect taking Monica to a nearby park. Alex, Vivian, and the two police officers went immediately to the park to find them. They had searched fruitlessly for half an hour when suddenly they heard a shout coming from some nearby woods. Mom, I'm hit. The voice called then stopped, as if someone had covered the person's mouth. Alex and Vivian both recognized Monica's voice. Vivian faced the direction of the voice and shouted in panic, Monica! Alex and the police officers turned around and saw a small copse of trees in front of them. Alex signaled to Vivian to keep quiet. He exchanged glances with the two officers. The three of them moved Vivian behind them and cautiously approached the group of trees. They could hear whispered voices and he knew that the suspect and Monica were nearby. Suddenly, a bush in front of them moved, and a man in a white mask rushed out. It was Slayer, the masked man whom Alex had injured at the bar a few days previously. Slayer faced Alex and pushed Monica in front of him. Monica! Vivian cried out. When she saw her daughter, she tried to rush over to her, but she was stopped by Alex. He looked fearfully at Slayer. He had already witnessed the brutality that this man was capable of, and he knew that this was a very precarious situation. The two police officers pointed their guns at Slayer. One of them said, Let go of the little girl right now. I... Slayer started to say something, but the police had already opened fire. The man was wearing a mask and holding Monica in front of him. In the eyes of the officers, there was no doubt that he was a very dangerous person. Bam! Slayer was hit by a bullet, and he fell to the ground. Monica fell with him. Vivian rushed to her and pulled her into her arms, while Alex rushed to Slayer and kneeled on his back to hold him down. Monica! She cried, but Monica's gaze never left Slayer. She was struggling in her mother's arms to get back to him. Monica, what's wrong with you? He's a very dangerous man who tried to take you, Vivian said to her. In tears, Monica replied, No, Slayer isn't a bad guy. 
He's my friend and Alex is hurting him. Mom, let go of me. I want to see him. Everyone was stunned by her words. They looked at Slayer who was still being held on the ground by Alex. Speak now. Why did you kidnap Monica? Alex asked him angrily. I didn't. I saved her. He replied. You're still lying. Alex's fist landed on the back of Slayer's head. Alex's methods were too aggressive, so the two police officers stopped him. It was their responsibility to interrogate the suspect. However, Slayer continued to insist that he was the one who saved Monica. At that moment, one of the officer's phones rang. After a short conversation, he ended the call and released Slayer. He explained, The surveillance camera showed that it all happened exactly as he said. This man defeated the two kidnappers and brought Monica here. He had no intention of harming her. And when he heard us shouting, he hid with her to protect her. Hearing what the officer said and watching how Monica reacted to Slayer, Alex and Vivian knew that they had been wrong about him. Vivian let go of Monica's hand and she looked at him. She said, Slayer, are you okay? Are you hurt? He replied calmly, Don't worry, the police only shot me with rubber bullets. It didn't hurt at all. Monica's face lit up. Banana bullets? She asked. She walked up to the two police officers and asked one of them, Mr. Policeman, can I look at your banana bullets? I want to try one and see if it tastes good. Only then did the two officers realize that Monica had some type of learning disability. They smiled and chatted with her for a while. Before leaving, they asked Alex and Vivian to go to the police station later that day to give their statements. Seeing that Monica seemed very happy with Slayer, Alex was confused. He wondered, What kind of person is this Slayer, and why does he always wear a mask? As if reading Alex's mind, out of the blue, Monica innocently asked Slayer, Slayer, can you take off your mask so I can see your face? No, my appearance will frighten you, he replied. He was caught off guard by her question and took a step back. It won't, I promise. Please let me see I'm begging you, Monica said pleadingly as she held Slayer's hand with both of hers. All right, Slayer finally agreed. Monica smiled happily. She was excited about seeing Slayer without his mask. Alex and Vivian were also watching curiously. They wanted to know more about this man. Slayer slowly took off his mask and revealed his face. Ah, a ghost! Monica screamed out in fear and ran to hide behind Vivian, who grabbed Alex's arm tightly. Alex's eyes narrowed. He was also shocked by what he saw. There were white spots on Slayer's face and a large purple birthmark over his left eye. These two colors made his face look terrifying and ugly. I've scared you, he said sadly when he saw their reactions. He looked forlorn as he grabbed the mask and put it back on his face. You followed me from Preston University, right? Alex asked him. He remembered feeling that someone was following him and concluded that it must have been Slayer. Yes, Slayer nodded sadly. He was aware that ever since Monica had seen his face, she had been hiding behind Vivian. Why? Are you planning to take revenge on me? Alex asked frankly. Slayer shook his head slowly. Although you hurt me the last time we met, I don't blame you. Actually, I've been looking for you, he replied. Why? Slayer was quiet for a moment. Although he couldn't see his face, Alex was sure that his lips were trembling. He stuttered. Because, because, his voice was shaky. It's okay, just tell me what's on your mind. Say it and I'm sure you'll feel better, Alex said as he patted Slayer on the shoulder. He could tell that he had something he needed to get off his chest. Because my face is disfigured, Right from when I was young, other kids have always laughed at me. In my town, I was a joke because I wanted to have friends, but no one wanted to play with me. 
In the end, I was sent to be raised in a monastery, but I was even bullied and mocked there. When I was old enough, I left the monastery to make my own way in life. I tried to get a job, but no one wanted to employ me, and I gave up all hope. I was ready to jump into the river and commit suicide. Did Henry save you? Alex had guessed that this may be the reason that Slayer was working for him. He nodded and continued with his story. He told me that he could stop people from mocking me. He gave me this mask and told me that if I wear it, I'll be an ordinary person like everyone else and that I'll be able to live a normal life. Do you think he was lying to you? Alex asked worriedly as he looked at Slayer's weird clothes. At least he stopped me from being mocked by others. I'm much better off now than I was before. I'm satisfied with my life. Slayer looked at Alex and said, When we met in the bar and I walked toward you with a dagger in my hand, you looked at me as an equal, without any discrimination. I'd never experienced that kind of look before in my life. It felt so good that even though you cut me, I wanted to meet you again. I don't hate you at all. Alex was surprised. He hadn't predicted for a minute that he had unknowingly saved himself that day by looking at this man as an equal. Alex said sadly, I understand that there are a lot of superficial people around, but you shouldn't be so afraid. If you get back out in society, you'll find that there are plenty of people who don't judge others by their looks. He continued, I must say it's very dangerous for you to help Henry do these horrible things. Do you really think that he's trying to help you? Or is he just using you for his own gain? Do you think that he even views you as a human being? He feeds me and pays me $800 a month. He respects me for my skills and even calls me Slayer. What makes you think that he isn't trying to help me? Slayer asked Alex in confusion. Have you seen the ridiculous clothes that he gave you to wear? And have you forgotten that you helped him at the bar? And he thanked you by hitting you on the head? Alex looked into Slayer's eyes and said, Wake up, buddy. He's brainwashed you. He treats you like his dog. No, that's not true, Slayer said in bewilderment. He's my savior. I'm not his dog. I'm not. Slayer covered his head with his hands. Episode 125, I'm your friend. All right, don't think about it now, try to calm down. Seeing that Slayer was distraught, Alex held his shoulders and tried to comfort him. Slowly, he started to relax. Let me ask you a question, Alex said. Who do you think really sees you as an equal, Henry or me? Um, Slayer thought about it seriously for a moment and said softly, you. Good, good, Alex said, and then he was quiet. He felt that Slayer had made great progress by seeing the truth. Do you think that what Henry told you to do was right? He continued. No, but he's my employer and saved me. I must do what he says, Slayer replied. Alex said resolutely, You know that I'm right. You've been completely brainwashed by him. I hope that you can see that now and that you'll stop helping him do these terrible things in the future. He looked at Slayer and asked him, Slayer, what's your real name? My name is Daniel Wiseman. Danny. Good name, Alex laughed. You're my friend now, Danny. Let's go out for a few beers sometime. Friends? Danny mumbled in a daze. He looked at Alex with a small smile but he still couldn't believe what he had just said. He asked, You said, I'm, I'm, I'm your friend? Yes, we're friends, of course, Alex said with a smile. Danny lowered his head and wiped away his tears. Friend. How much he'd yearned to have a friend over the years. A man doesn't cry easily. If you cry again, I'll feel very awkward, Alex said with a smile. I wasn't crying, Danny replied. He finally had a friend, and he didn't want to make his new friend feel awkward. 
Danny, if Henry asks you to kill me again, will you do it? No, I won't kill my friends, and I won't let them be bullied either. He answered without hesitation. That's great, buddy. As Alex patted his shoulder, Danny's face broke into a broad smile. It was the first genuine smile of his life. I should go. If Henry can't find me, he'll get angry, he said to Alex. All right, but please remember what I said. Danny could see no pity, no discrimination, and no mockery in Alex's eyes. There was only friendship. He nodded and was about to leave when his gaze shot toward Monica. Monica, go hug Danny, Alex said to her. Vivian pushed her forward, but Monica tried to hide behind her. Alex smiled awkwardly at Danny. He could guess how crushed his friend would feel by the child's reaction, so he walked over to her. He squatted in front of her and said, Monica, Danny saved you. He's your friend. And it'll make him very sad if you're still scared of him. But he's a ghost, she said as she hugged Vivian, obviously still afraid of Danny's face. Alex sighed. Alex got into the car and drove to the police station with Vivian and Monica. They wanted to find out who was behind Monica's abduction and their motive. The officer in charge of their case led them to the interrogation room. Through the window, they saw that the two kidnappers were being questioned by the police. From the solemn expressions and furrowed brows of the two officers, Alex guessed that the interrogation was not going well. Two hours later, the officers exited the interrogation room. Alex and Vivian had also finished giving their statements, so they approached the officers and asked them what they had learned from the two suspects. They seem to be seasoned criminals. They're not giving much away under interrogation, but don't worry, we have a lot of evidence. They'll definitely end up behind bars, they promised Alex. Thank you, officer, Alex said respectfully. Vivian nodded slightly to express her gratitude. Monica was still asking the two officers for banana candies, Let's go, Alex suggested to Vivian. It didn't look like there were going to be any answers that day, and it was already dark. Just as they were leaving the police station, a distinguished-looking man in his 40s walked out from an office. All the police officers turned and looked at him with respect. Commissioner, one greeted him. Another said, Commissioner Hargreaves. Another simply greeted him, Boss? This middle-aged man was the police commissioner. He acknowledged his subordinates with a nod. His brows were deeply creased and he was clearly worried. The commissioner addressed the two officers who had been interviewing the suspects and whispered a few words to them. Finally, he waved his hand and said, Go. They walked reluctantly to the holding cell. When the commissioner saw Alex and the others, he walked over and said, I'm so sorry about this. I want to convict these men, but it's been taken out of my hands. I'm under a lot of pressure for my seniors. Alex and Vivian didn't understand what the commissioner was apologizing about. Then they saw the two suspects smugly walking out from the detention cell. Vivian grabbed Alex's arm and asked in shock, Commissioner, you're not releasing them? The commissioner could only grimace and reiterate, Sorry, it's out of my hands. One of the suspects walked up to Vivian and said brashly, Hey, Miss Carter, we meet again. You wanted to leave, now leave, the commissioner cursed angrily. He was struggling to hold on to his temper with these two thugs. One of the suspects said, Commissioner Hargreaves, you'd better treat us with a bit more respect. If Mr. Granger wants your badge, he only has to say the word to the chief. He was sure that Dale Granger was behind their release. The commissioner could only glare at them and try to suppress his anger. He knew that he couldn't afford to lose his temper with these two suspects. You coward. One of them scoffed arrogantly at the commissioner before shifting his gaze to Monica, who was hiding behind Vivian. With a sinister smile, he said, Little girl, I didn't get to keep you this time, but watch out. I'll definitely be coming for you again. As he spoke, he moved to pinch Monica's cheeks. A figure stood in front of him. When he looked up, he saw Alex's face glaring at him with a stone-cold smile. Although Alex had beaten them before, now that they knew they had Dale Granger's support, 
they were no longer afraid of him. One of them pointed at Alex and spat out, Get out of my way. Do you know who I work for? If you don't move right now, I guarantee you'll regret it. Alex replied calmly, Really? No, I have no idea who you scum work for. Why don't you tell us? The other suspect said to Alex, I think you must have a death wish. Listen, we work for Mr. Dale Granger. Now are you afraid? I don't know anything about Dale Granger, but from where I'm standing, you're just a couple of scumbags who don't deserve any respect. Alex's eyes showed a trace of coldness. He asked himself, Who is Dale Granger? What does he have to do with everything that's been going on? The suspect stood in front of Alex, shouting, Screw you, you crazy piece of shit. You want to hit me? Go on then. Bam! Alex beat him down to the ground with a punch. Damn, you really do want to fight, the other suspect said in surprise. Before he could say anything else, Alex's fist landed on his nose, and he instantly joined his friend on the ground. The two suspects pointed at Alex and complained to Hargreaves. Commissioner Hargreaves, he hit us right under your nose. Quick, arrest him. Commissioner, you heard them yourself. They asked me to hit them, Alex said innocently. Then he thanked the police officers, said goodbye, and left with Vivian and Monica. Watching them go, the commissioner sighed. He had been under pressure to let the two suspects go. The reason for the order was that they were hoping that they would lead them to capture much bigger fish. Their real goal was to bring down the whole criminal gang that these two lowlives were part of. Alex took a cab home with Vivian and Monica. Vivian cooked dinner and then coaxed Monica to sleep. Alex was sitting on the sofa in the living room when Vivian came out of her daughter's bedroom. He called her over. Why has someone been coming into your home and assaulting you? Alex asked gravely. What? She looked flustered. What are you talking about? Who's been coming into my home? Vivian, stop lying to me. Today Monica told me that men sometimes come into your home drag you into the bedroom and beat you up. When she heard that he already knew about her situation, Vivian sat down on the sofa dejectedly. What's going on? Tell me. Maybe I can help you, Alex said gently. You can't help me, but I will tell you what's going on, she said calmly. I used to be in a relationship with this great guy. We were very happy. He was well respected by everyone and he protected me. No one would dare bother me while he was around. She continued, but then something happened and he was forced to leave New York. Without his protection, I started to get harassed. Who is this man? Why did he abandon you? Alex asked. His first thought was that this must be a scumbag. It's not that he abandoned me. He had no choice but to leave. She looked at Alex and continued, Do you know about the Azure Dragon Society? He was one of the society's leaders. Two months ago, the society was completely demolished by a guy from one of the city's powerful families. No one from the society was allowed to stay in New York, so my partner had to leave. The Azure Dragon Society. Alex was stunned when he heard this. He and Ken Stokes had been responsible for the extermination of the Azure Dragon Society. He realized that the guy Vivian was talking about, who forced her boyfriend away, was him. He said stupidly, I heard that the Azure Dragon Society was one of the poisonous tumors of New York. Surely this young guy did a good thing? A good thing? Vivian's eyes were cold as she said angrily, he forced my man to leave and is therefore personally responsible for my situation. What's so good about that? Why do you think everyone from the Azure Dragon Society must be bad? My partner is a good and honest man. She continued, After the Azure Dragon Society was destroyed, all the gangs of New York, big and small, rose up again. When my man fled, there was no one to protect me. They come to my house whenever they feel like it under the pretext of collecting protection fees from me. I'm just a woman. I can't do anything to stop them. 
Vivian's tears were falling to the ground like pearls from a broken necklace. Episode 126, The Mysterious Old Woman Alex looked at Vivian, who was crying next to him, and murmured under his breath, Vivian, I'm so sorry. What are you apologizing for? she asked, looking at him with teary eyes. It's that young rich guy who should be sorry. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be in this situation. Hearing this, his heart ached even more. He had ruined the life of someone he liked. He composed himself and asked, Then who's that Dale Granger that they were talking about at the police station? Do you know him? You're only a student. Of course you wouldn't know. Vivian wiped away her tears and told Alex, After the Azure Dragon Society was destroyed, the various New York gangs battled for superiority. Now the pecking order is starting to become clear, and a gang called Flag Sect runs the city's underworld. Dale Granger is one of their leaders. Flag Sect, Alex muttered softly. He had already thought of a way to deal with them. Vivian continued, Flag Sect received a large portion of their resources from the Azure Dragon Society. Along with the resources they already had, they've grown much more powerful than the original Azure Dragon Society. Its leader, Quentin Robbins, appears to be a respectable member of society, and he speaks as eloquently as the mayor himself. I've heard that most of their money is laundered through one of the most famous department stores in New York. Alex listened and thought, and they're targeting Vivian simply because she's so beautiful? Vivian, you won't be harassed by these bastards again, he said to her seriously. He felt that he owed her. Okay, she replied softly. She was touched, but didn't take his words to heart. He was only a student, and she was up against the flag sacked. How could Alex protect her or himself? <laughs> bang, bang, bang! At this moment, someone thudded on the door. Open the door, Vivian, right now. It's him. Her expression turned into one of terror. Alex frowned and asked, Dale Granger? Yes, now quickly hide. He'll kill you if he sees you. I'm not afraid. I promised Monica that I wouldn't let you two get bullied again by this thug. He looked determined. Vivian went to him and kissed him on the corner of his mouth. He was stunned for a moment. Thank you. I'm very touched by your kindness. But now is not the time to be a hero, she said calmly. Then she took advantage of his shock and pushed him into the bedroom. Don't come out under any circumstances or I won't be able to save you. Vivian, Alex wanted to say more, but she had already closed the door. The ranger was still banging on the front door. He was shouting, Open the door. If you don't open the door, I'll kick it down. I'm coming. Vivian tried to steal herself before opening the door. A tall, middle-aged man walked in. He had a bald head and wore a black suit. His exposed wrists showed that his arms must be covered in tattoos. He was Flag Sack's underboss, Dale Granger. Mr. Granger, why are you here? Vivian greeted him. Although she was smiling, her smile was fake. Granger stared at her and sneered. Why am I here? Huh, that's a good question. As you know, I'm a bachelor, and I'm always on the lookout for a beautiful single woman like you. What do you think I want? Slowly, he approached Vivian. Sit down, I'll get you a glass of water. Vivian offered, trying to appease him. She was terrified of this man. A glass of water? You're right, I am thirsty right now. But water can't resolve our situation. Granger's gaze didn't leave Vivian. Suddenly, he threw himself at her, but she dodged and he missed. He said, I can understand why you rejected me when Flag Sect was still a second-rate gang, but now we run New York, and you're still hiding from me. Tell me why. You know I can protect you and keep you safe. Mr. Granger, I just want to live a peaceful life. Please leave me alone. Leave you alone? Ha! <laughs> His eyes were cold and hard as he said, That's fine, I'm not asking for much. 
keep me company tonight, and then I'll leave you alone. As he said this, he rushed toward her. This time, she didn't dodge in time, and she ended up being hugged by him. Let go of me! Vivian struggled fiercely in his arms, but there was no way she could get away from him. Granger put his nose close to Vivian's neck and sniffed greedily. You smell delicious, he said as he held her hand tightly, a lewd smile appearing on his face. Then he carried her to the sofa, took off his jacket, and threw himself on top of her. Get off! Vivian kicked and hit, but he had already kissed her several times and was about to start ripping off her clothes. Suddenly, something heavy struck his head. Ouch, he said, rubbing his head. He stood up and saw a young teenage girl standing in front of him. She was wearing pajamas and had a golf club in her hand. Mom, I'll hit him again. Monica aimed her golf club at Granger's head. She was very scared, and when she saw all his tattoos, she started shaking. Little girl, damn you, come over here, he said, walking toward Monica. She swung the golf club at him again, but this time she missed, and he managed to grab the club from her and throw it out of reach. Do you want to kill me? He hissed as he held her up with one hand and smacked her butt twice, causing her to scream out loud. You bastard, Alex said to himself as he watched Granger throwing Monica onto the sofa. She landed heavily and then fell onto the floor. Monica, are you okay? Vivian's heart ached as she rushed over to help her up. Tears were flowing down her face. She was so proud that Monica had dared to challenge a ferocious thug like Dale Granger to protect her. I'm fine, Mom. I'm not hurt, Monica replied. But I'm no use. I can't beat this horrible man. She fell off the sofa onto the floor. How can she not be hurt? Vivian thought anxiously. Mother and daughter. <laughs> I'm so lucky today. Such a young beauty and such a mature beauty. We're going to have fun together tonight, Granger said with an obscene smile. As he unbuckled his belt, he walked toward Vivian and Monica. This night will be unforgettable for both of you. Monica, hurry up and go to the bedroom. Vivian pushed her away. She thought, No one can stop this beast now, but I need to make sure that he only has his way with me. Monica's still a child. How can he even think about laying a finger on her? I'm not leaving. I want to protect you. Monica didn't understand what Granger was planning. She had only one goal, and that was not to let her mom be harmed. She glared at him and said, Don't come any closer, or I'll beat you to death. <laughs> Either of you are going anywhere. Come on, my two darlings. Let me take good care of you. At that moment, the bedroom door slammed open. Granger was startled and quickly looked in the direction of the bedroom. You bastard! Boiling with rage, Alex rushed over to him and hit him in the face with a lamp. Granger's face turned red and he screamed as he fell to the ground, covering his head with his hands. Vivian, get up, Alex ordered, and he started pulling Vivian and Monica toward the door so that they could all escape. But before he could open the door, Alex heard, Hold it right there. Granger grabbed his hair and pulled him down to the ground. From the floor, Alex shouted at Vivian, Go, hurry up and get out of here. He could only hope that Vivian could get out in time. Then, even if he died at that moment, he would have no regrets. Alex, sobbed Vivian. Alex, cried Monica. They didn't want to leave their hero. But Vivian knew that they wouldn't be any help if they stayed, and Alex wouldn't want his desperate attempt to save them to be in vain. Monica, let's go, she said. She pulled her daughter to the door and they rushed out. Damn. Covered in blood, Granger looked terrifying. He raised his fist which was as big as a sandbag and tried to punch Alex, who was still lying on the ground. Alex dodged, and Granger's fist slammed into the floor instead. Alex tried to focus and regain all his strength. He had to fight with everything he had if he didn't want to die at the hands of Granger. He somehow managed to wrap his legs around Granger's head, and then he used all his strength to throw him to the ground. He quickly stood up and ran toward the nearest door. Alex slammed the door behind him 
and then leaned his back against it to prevent Granger from getting out. He breathed a sigh of relief. Ah! Alex suddenly realized that he was in the kitchen, and standing in front of him was a petite old lady. She was five feet tall, and her white hair was pulled back in a bun. She was holding a piece of bread and looking curiously at Alex. She looked a little weak, but there was a certain dignity to her face as she stared at him with hawk-like eyes. Alex was shocked to suddenly find this strange elderly lady in Vivian's flat. What a handsome young lad, the woman said with a strange smile. Her voice sounded very old and frail. Suddenly, the old woman threw away the bread. Her feet shuffled slightly, and in the blink of an eye, she was standing in front of Alex. Her hand was reaching toward his neck. Alex was shocked by the weird scene, but he managed to move out of the way, and the old lady's hand slammed through the door. She turned around and was getting ready to attack him a second time. Open the door, you little shit, shouted Granger as he broke the door open. With a bang, it slammed into the old woman's head. Damn, Vivian's mother is here too. He looked at the old woman and said, Old woman, you better leave right now if you don't want to get hurt. How dare you? Hearing that he was being disrespectful to her, the old woman flew into a rage. With a wave of her arm, she threw a toaster at his head. He dodged, and the toaster smashed a large hole in the door. The exertion caused the woman to cough violently. Wow, I can't believe you just did that, said Granger. He strode over to her and wrapped his arm around her neck. Damn it, since you don't appreciate that I'm trying to help you, you better say your goodbyes. The old woman was helpless against Granger. Her entire body was lifted off the ground by him, and it seemed like he was about to strangle her to death. Her face turned red, and all she could do was wink at Alex. Alex picked up a frying pan and threw it at him. In that split second, the old woman picked up a kitchen knife from the chopping board and mercilessly hacked straight down Granger's face. Die, you bastard! She screamed. Granger fell to the ground, leaving a trail of blood. The kitchen knife fell with him. Hey guys, Alex here. Listen to full episodes of Insta Millionaire exclusively on the Pocket FM app. Click the link in the description to install the app now.